ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் ஹாப்பி ரிபப்ளிக் டே எவ்ரி ஒன் ஸோ மை நேம் இஸ் ராகுல் ஐ ஃபினிஷ் மை மாஸ்டர்ஸ் இன் ஐஓடி அண்ட் ஏஐ அண்ட் தென் கரண்ட்லி ஐம் ஒர்க்கிங் ஆஸ் அன் ஏஐ இன்ஜினியர் இன் பர்லின் ஜெர்மனி பட் ஐம் ஒரிஜினலி ஃப்ரம் ஹைதராபாத் ஐ ஐ ஹாவ் பீன் அசோசியேட்டட் வித் சம் பொலிட்டிக்கல் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் பிஃபோர் பட் since august last year we started this justice movement of india about which we are going to talk about today yeah that's i think that's it about me uh, okay harish is here cool akash maybe you can go ahead yeah hello everyone so i am akash so i completed my masters in cognitive science so even i'm very much interested in politics and sustainable development and all so i along with rahul and couple of people we started this justice movement of india in the last year august 15th we launched this movement and we are trying to in the last 4 5 months we are trying to uh, uh, come up with a manifesto for the uh, movement and all so we will be explaining about that as well throughout the meeting and about the couple of projects what we are going to launch yeah What is Sonika? Yeah. Akash and thank you Rahul. Uh, first of all, congratulations for starting this Justice Movement of India. It's been a year, I guess. So uh, first of all, I'm a congratulation and all the best that we are doing this. Um, I'm Sonika. I'm an image consultant and soft skills trainer. So I train students and uh, working professionals about how to build their personal brand and how to uh, communicate well and how to be... with their best looks uh, whenever they are approaching anyone for the first time um, i am interested about yes yeah, sustainable development and zero waste management how to uh, am uh, interested about how to uh, start a zero waste lifestyle at everyone so what, what are the things we need to any inspiration or motivation so i work on those areas and uh, i'm also interested uh, about uh, about uh mental health about people because that's where the people need to have the inspiration to start even for this justice movement also if at all anybody is a part of this so uh, psychology are my subjects and sustainable development um that's all yeah thank you great yeah harish hi harish can you introduce hi. yourself hi hi uh, good evening everyone first of all happy republic day to everyone in this panel so my name is harish i am the second year bba student from chitur district i have worked uh, as yfs district coordinator and uh, working with uh, presently working with uh, political party as tnsf member and uh, some i have did many works in the party and uh, now going thank you So we'll go on to the presentation. Rahul, you can share the screen and you can start. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Just give me a second. So, okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so, as you know, our movement's name is Justice Movement of India. Um, so, the because we named our network, our movement, Justice Movement of India, so the question arises, why did we choose the word justice why do we need justice in general like why not equality or something else so it's it needs to be clarified why we chose the word justice here right so to clarify that there's actually a really nice depiction um okay so i think this is used commonly in many it uh, scenarios i think i mean it's quite famous this picture but uh, let's like let me demonstrate why we need justice using this so here there's a really nice depiction so uh, i would like to explain this with a real life example as well so uh, let's imagine so right now there's inequal access of healthcare so different people have different levels of incomes they stay in different different geographical regions and depending on where they live and the road and public health care infrastructure over there they might have difficulties and not might because it's already 
I will, uh, the inequality is rampant in our society uh, when it comes to healthcare. Uh, so in order to fix that, then we move forward towards equality. So equality is where, okay, let's say the public healthcare structure is fixed and the infrastructure like roads and ambulances and all these things are also fixed where you get sort of equal access to healthcare, but that's still not enough because maybe the government has just sanctioned one public hospital per district. They did not consider the population density. And this might lead to, you know, over utilization and then uh, not enough human resources or equipment to treat the population in that area. So then you'll move forward to equity where now it's considering the per capita density, uh, density per district. If there's 10 lakh people in one district, then you would give 10 hospitals there. But if there's 20 lakh people in another district, you have to, you're supposed to give 20 hospitals there. You have to make sure that there's equal access. So e equity is basically a step forward from equi uh, equality. You move it a little bit forward, but that's still not enough because uh, you know that like currently in our society, public healthcare infrastructure is not on par with the private healthcare infrastructure uh, because there's not much investment in the public healthcare system in the first place. And then even if in the future there is going to be enough in, uh, investment in the public health infrastructure, then there's also problems in the future because the government might end up in a situation where it is lacking funds and then it won't be able to support the public health care infrastructure. But then like an elegant solution to that could be that you can make the health insurance, health insurance mandatory for everyone. And then you say, hey, we charge a certain amount of whatever it is, maybe 2% of everyone's income. Doesn't matter how much one person makes. If a person is making 100 rupees, then you just charge that person two rupees. If a person is making 1000 rupees, then you charge that person the 2% of that. So basically you charge 2% of a person's income and then that will go into a public health insurance fund. And then you, people will get equal access to healthcare and the government can just, uh, you know, support that healthcare fund if there is lack of funds over there. And then also in, the, in that mandatory healthcare system, it's not uh, fair to ask people who are unemployed, especially able and dependents to give the money, right? So then you go, uh, you go ahead and give subsidies to them. So stuff like that. So basically you're supposed to fix the system completely such that it's fair in the first place. So not, not like band-aids, but actually how to stop the wound in the first place. So you have to make sure there is equal access and equal access to good nutrition so that every every population community will actually be not prone to ill health in the first place then then just make sure that, making sure you attack the roots of the causes everything you attack the root cause of ill health and then make sure everything is fine those are fixing the whole system in the first place is justice that is the reason why we chose the word justice here instead of equality or equity. Yeah. Um, does anyone want to comment something here or is it okay if I move forward? Okay, perfect. Then, okay. So justice is basically like I explained, fixing the system, but in uh, you know, if you have to put it, then it's basically everyone get everyone getting their fair share. Everyone getting what is rightfully theirs. So here you can break that down into individual rights, like uh, our fundamental rights, and then collective rights. And then the state's duty is to deliver and make sure that citizens can get their individual rights and collective rights. It, it's you know, uh, it's the state's duty to make sure all these rights and aspirations of citizens are fulfilled. So then, okay. So because today is the Republic Day, uh, once again, happy Republic Day, everyone. 
So if uh, if you notice our preamble, you'll see justice is highlighted uh, in the second line. So the Constituent Assembly was formed immediately after we got independence and they debated for two years before they completely finished the drafting of our constitution. And this is what the Constituent Assembly came up with. As you can see, there is justice here. The word justice is clearly mentioned and our constitution grants us social, economic and political justice, not just justice vaguely, but it grants us social, economic and political justice then there's one justice that is missing from this, which is environmental justice. And environmental justice was actually mentioned in the directive principles of our uh, constitution. But later, I think now uh, there's also need to include that environmental justice in the preamble as well. So, so there are basically four pillars of justice, social justice, environmental justice, economic justice, and political justice. Most of the political parties out there, they only focus on social and economic justice. But the problem is that is a, a half side picture. It's only looking at one side of the coin. It's not the complete picture. If you only tackle social and economic injustices, you can't really fix the problem because then you're missing out the point and not granting political justice and environmental justice to the people. Uh, I'll let Akash take over from here and please go ahead. So right now, uh, as we know, we got to know the pillars of justice. So how do we establish four, these four pillars? Thus, we know about the social justice, like we, we should not discriminate based on any kind of uh, categories like uh, sexual orientation, gender, or any caste or religion. So we, have, we want to do build a society where we don't discriminate based on all these categories. So that is called social justice. And environmental justice is like protecting our nature, our commons around us, commons in the, in the sense, the heritage places or the animals or the biodiversity around us. So all this comes under environmental justice and economic justice. Right now, we, we, we know in India, the inequality of income is very much increasing. Uh, the recent survey by Oxfam, it itself portrayed that the highest uh, individual, like first person in India who is getting a much more amount than the bottom 40% of the population. So Adani is a person who is getting huge income than compared to the bottom 40%. So inequality is increasing after even 75 years. We are not able to achieve this huh. economic justice. Yeah, right now, Ooh. we also have this political justice. In India, we have different groups and communities uh, which are underrepresented till now, like Dalits and also OBC people and also minorities. So, but the political class, if you take, these people are not at all that much represented. Also, the gender. Women also are not at all represented in the political scenario. So how do we achieve this political justice? So throughout the 75 years, based on our preamble, we are able to work on social justice and economic justice for some part, but we are not able to work on environmental or political at all, these two pillars. So what we thought, these four pillars are really necessary for any society or any country to progress further in the 21st century. So how do we establish these four pillars? We'll see in the next slide. So basically, we need to localize this justice to the community level. So current India, how we are functioning is like we have a central government or union government, what we call it as, and the state government and the local government. It's a three-tier model of governance structure what we follow in our country. So most of the policies are formulated by the union government, and then some part of the policies are formulated by state government. And the local government has very less say on how to formulate the policies, how to impact the people around them. So that's how you can see the inverted kind of a triangle shape, how the policies are formulated, how the powers are distributed, the decentralization of the powers. The current India, we can see very much in the news and all, it's very much polarized right now. Polarized based on religion, polarized based on caste, and all this is going on. And there's a damage of to nature is also happening because of industrialization or the capitalistic policies, 
which are followed by the current government. And based on that, you can say triple trickle down economy is like the policies of the uh, what are the good policies what you initiate at the central level. The fruits of those policies are not at all reaching the people at the ground. That's what this inverted shape of triangle also shows us at the local level where the people are living. They are not getting the fruits of the policies drafted by the state level and the central level. So that is called trickle down economy and centralized policy making in our country. Very much we are centralizing the power, uh, how to do the policy making and all. So from this kind of a current India, we have to transform to the India, which is progressive, which has social harmony among all the communities in the society from between the religions, between, between the different caste, between the different states who speak different languages. So we need to have social harm, harmony among us and also local economy. When we say how we are different from the trickle down economy is like we have to create a local economy where people who are living in a city, they can get the jobs where they live. Now, right now, so much of migration is happening in our country. As we know, in the COVID-19 time, we have seen when the lockdown has there, so many people have walked down from the cities to the villages because so many people are coming right now from the villages to the cities for the opportunities. So why can't we create economy where they live? So that is lacking in the current India. So we have to create a local economy and we have to generate the local jobs over there. And the people who live in this local economies, they have to take care of their surrounding nature. So that is called sustainability. And also participatory democracy is like the people who live in this local communities, they have to have a say in whatever the policies they make. So this is the progress to India we will get when we localize the justice to the local community level. So next you can go to next slide. And for this localizing this justice to the com local community level. Uh, how far we have come in India so for any country you can see that three types of government as I said in India also we have a third type we call urban local bodies or rural local bodies. So this kind of uh, third kind third type government structure we adopted in India in the 1992 or 1994 through the uh, because of the constitutional amendment, which is called 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment. And it's been 30 years since then, from 1992 to till now, it's been 30 years. As we know, the Panchayat Raj system, which is called rural governance, and the urban local bodies, just like which is called urban governance, they were not functional at par with what we actually visualized in 1992. So there are so many of reports are coming up in the last 30 years for evaluating this or local bodies, how they are functioning. So we can see this paper cuttings from last last decade, nearly 30 years since the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments came into force. Politicians have failed to keep their word on the true devolution of powers, responsibilities and accountability. So as we saw in the inverted triangular structure, the central government is right. Central government and state government has more powers compared to the local government. Even right now, even after having a constitutional amendments where constitution is saying that you have to devolve the powers, but the state governments are not in a position to devolve the powers and even they are not able to devolve the funds as well. So we'll go to the next slide and you can see what are the important things in the federal governance structure. As I said, there are three levels of governance structure. Central, central, which is called a union government and the state government. And also these are the different other structure, rural governance and urban governance. So in the federal governance structure, we don't call a country as a central country which runs by government. We don't call it as a central government. We call it as a union. Even in our constitution, we have written that India is a union of states. So, so many of at the time of 1947, from 1947 to 1949, there used to be so many princely states which are 500 or so. Until uh, at the time, the Vallabhai Patel, he is the person who unified all these princely states and brought under a union government called India. That's why we call it a union of states. Even Hyderabad is the one particular state which joined later in the union in 1948. 
after the police action and all. So that's why we call this as a union of states. But it's not like holy union government has the powers all. But here the powers are divided between a union, state, and local. And the local category, we have rural governments and also urban governments. In the rural case, we call it as Panchayat Raj system. In the Panchayat Raj system, again, there are th three types. There's one is a district level, which is which we call it a Zilla Parishad, and Mandal or block level, which we call Panchayat Samiti or Mandal Parishad, and village level, we call it a Gram Panchayat. This all three type comes from the Panchayat Raj system. And for urban governance, based on the population density, the constitution has recommended to divide the urban areas into three other categories. One is Nagar Panchayats, which are right now transitioning from the rural background to the urban background. Those are called towns, normal just towns, which have just come up right now. The district headquarters and all this. And second thing was the Nagar Palikas, the second tier of cities. Tier two cities are called Nagar Palikas, the municipal councils or municipal uh, municipalities. We call it as Nagar Palikas. And a municipal corporation is like the metropolitan cities, where, which have the municipal corporations. So that's how the urban governance is divided. Uh, do you guys have any doubt over here, like how this, this will function or anything like that? Or I'll go forward to the next slide. Yeah. So right now we have seen the governance structure in India, but we also seen in the last 30 years, the powers and the funds are not devolved according to the constitution, what, whatever it is written in the last, in the 1992 when we enacted this amendments. So how we need to fix this? So we need to fix this so local self-governance, rural and urban for the progressive India. So how we are going to do that? How we are going to do that? For progressive India, we need to decentralize. So as I was saying, in the last 30 years, we are not able to decentralize these powers and the staff which are needed for the local bodies and the funds. So right now, if you see Hyderabad as an example, where I am re living right now, the GHMC is a municipal organization which is autonomous. And also we have a uh, uh, mayor and also corporators over there where we elect mayor and corporators for every five years. This is called urban local body, Hyderabad greater municipal body. So right now, when you compare this local governance structure with a New York City mayor, the New York City mayor has much more powers than compared to the Hyderabad city mayor. Why this is because in US, they, they devolve the powers totally to the city level. The mayor of the New York City has much more responsibility to safeguard the people in the New York City than compared to the Hyderabad mayor. Here, the Hyderabad mayor doesn't have so much of powers. It's like a just a position where we elect the people. They have all these uh, monthly meetings or yearly meetings. They uh, project the budget and all. But most of the power is right now with the GHMC commissioner. This commissioner is appointed by state government. Even today, the state government is interrupting the local governance process by recruiting a commissioner at the city level. The most of the powers right now are in the hands of the commissioner of the GHMC, not in the hands of the mayor of the city. That's why our, our mayor of Hyderabad or corporators, they don't have so much of power. Even though if we devolve the powers to them, they don't have the funds to take up the developmental projects at the local level. They have to again go to the state government to ask them to allocate the funds to the local bodies so that we can take care of this roads or drainage system or any other municipal works or safeguarding the parks or rejuvenating the uh, urban spaces in the our locality these all kind of things that a local body is not able to do right now because of lack of funds even though you devolve the powers you, if the funds are not there with you, you can't do so much. So even though if you get the funds, if the staff is not there with you, the, the employees are not there. Right now, the uh, Hyderabad Municipal Organization, they can't recruit their own employees. They have to rely on the state government to recruit the employees. So that's how these three are the more important aspects which are recommended by the, every expert in the India 
to decentralize the governance, we need the three aspects. We need to decentralize the powers, we need to decentralize the staff, we need to decentralize the funds. As I said about the powers, in the constitution itself, in the 1992, we have written that urban local bodies should take care of 18 functions and rural local bodies should take care of 23 functions. And right now, these functions are totally interrupted by state government. They are taking care of this. But the positions what we have, MPTCs, ZPTCs, and Sarpanch in Panchayata systems are just like a, they don't have so much of power to do the developmental works. And even the mayors or corporators are just like a position, even they don't have the powers. So this is a major aspect, even today, right now experts are recommending to decentralize the, them totally. And we'll go forward from here. And to, to make this local self-governance possible, emphasizing about this word, local self-governance. Here we can also say the local governance, but local self-governance governance is a key word because the self-governance is the thing like governance by the people itself. The people will be involved in the governance process. The citizens will come to develop the policies which they have to follow in their own city or their own locality. So that is called local self-governance. That can be possible only when we involve all the stakeholders. Experts from the different fields like policy making, healthcare, education, and in startups or business world. Experts should also come into the uh, on board on this platform and also civil society organizations and also citizens and the government. If you identify any problem in your locality, we can solve those problems only when you involve all these stakeholders. Then only we can solve this solve the problems around us. So this local self governance can be possible only when you involve all these stakeholders. So we'll go forward. So how we can uh, involve all of them. So as we thought, the justice movement of India is trying to create a, this, this kind of a discourse in India to emphasize on the local governance and also community sustainability. So our major aim is to develop the communities which, which are maybe rural communities or urban community, make them sustainable. That is to local governance, local self-governance by involving all those stakeholders and also raising our voice for the uh, decentralization of the funds, power, and the staff. And we'll go forward to the next slide. And because of this aim, we started this Justice Movement of India. We The major purpose of Justice Movement of India is, is like we are a totally a citizen-led movement. And we try to educate, empower, encourage, and engage Indian citizens to achieve a world of justice. As a movement, we wanted to bring a systemic change, and which is a fourfold, which has a social aspect, economic aspect, political, and environmental aspect. We wanted to bring a social change at the grassroots level, and economic change by focusing on equitable and inclusive development, and political change through policy level innovation, and environmental change through safeguarding the rights of nature. That is the whole purpose of Justice Movement of India. And the vision of the Justice Movement of India is like, make India as a progressive nation by making our local communities just, resilient, inclusive, and sustainable. These kind of words are right now, maybe new to the India, they may seem these words are very jargon, so may not, no one knows about these words, but we wanted to introduce these words to the India as well. We wanted to make this really plausible in our local communities in terms of social, economic, political, and environmental fronts. And we wanted to educate and encourage citizens to fully realize their constitutional rights and fulfill their responsibilities. And empower, empower and engage, engage citizens in the establishing well-being-based communities where humans, nature, and other species' rights are protected. This is a vision. And how we are going to achieve this is by through this mission. Initiate a discourse on systemic change, which can be achieved through progressive clean and green politics. As we know, to bring a change in a, any kind of a society, there are two pathways. One is through, from the outside the political system, through activism, through NGOs, or experts raising their voice. Another through the, within the system, by contesting in the politics, by changing the system itself, from through the system. So we are trying to bring these two pathways together. We are trying to bridge, bridge the gap between these two pathways. The people who are working outside the system, 
and people who wanted to bring the change within the system as well. So Justice Movement of India's major mission is to bridge the gap between these two pathways. So that's how we wanted to organize citizens around grassroots level issues and launch campaigns to influence relevant stakeholders. And this is the mission what we wanted to do. So when we involve all the stakeholders for developing our local communities, we wanted to derive the solutions based on this fourfold model what we thought by involving the policy making and also psychology of the people. So they are right now much more interaction is happening between policy making and psychology because when you derive a solution, we have to know how the people respond, how they behave. So that's why we wanted to involve a psychological aspect of people as well and the technology solutions as well and also design. Design, design is another field which is interacting with three of them. So we wanted to bring the experts from all these kind of fields and we wanted to brainstorm about the problems what we face at the local level. Then we wanted to develop the solutions for the problems what we are facing. And we can go to the next slide. And this is how we want to do. We have, right now we have seen uh, how we are going to develop the solution, but how we are going to execute this in the form of six steps. Initially, we do a, we choose a particular local community or constituency. There we go and do a first step, which is called public survey or there to know, know about the citizen concerns or problems, what they're facing. And second step is to create awareness among the citizens regarding those local problems what we identify and about the sustainability of the community. And third thing is to bring the NGOs and experts and citizens over there in the, their local community and develop the solutions from based on the fourfold model. And step four is like working along with the NGOs or politicians over there, whoever there in the local communities and persuading the politicians to take up these problems and enacting the laws or can allocating the money for the solutions and all that is step four and step five is like resolving the local issues and encouraging citizens with the humble backgrounds if the politicians are not able not if the local politicians are not in a position to respond to our issues then we identify the people who wanted to run for the elections as well to raise the voice for these issues at the local level so that we can bring the change from the within the system as well, not from the outside the system. And step six, like step six is like we are when we launch an initiative in the local community, we are trying to uh, sustain this movement for the longer term. That's how we can bring it any change. So we can see throughout the history there are so many movements which came for some kind of cause, but they disappear soon after that. But the result of those causes and the movements, some causes have. Some moments have created a remarkable change, but some moments just came for a certain period and they disappeared. So right now we wanted to bring people or, or citizens in the locality and work with them for the longer period from through the community service and also through the politics as well, as I said, the two pathways. So this is the six steps what we wanted to follow for executing the approach what we have. And thus, through these six steps, we wanted to achieve the local self-governance and evidence-based solutions, the what we developed based on the fourfold model. So these two aspects will lead to the building of sustainable cities or the communities in India. And when you have the sustainable cities or communities, we can achieve the next slide, what we all know, the sustainable development goals, what we have, 17 sustainable development goals. But sadly, here we can see in the last 2022 SDG index, India ranks at 121 position out of 166. We only concerned about the GDP of the country. We will be making our country as a $5 trillion economy and all. But as we see other indices like SGD, SGD index and human developmental index and hunger index and all these index, we are, we are very much lagging behind. So we can only change our society around India when we truly make a sustainable way of living and the cities also. So our total aim is like bringing the governance to the local level and where the people are living. And from here, I think Rahul can take over. Thank you. So yeah, thank you, Akash. Um, yeah, so that's the reason why 
we launched our movement actually on the 76th independence day last year and we wanted to also take this opportunity to, to show you what we've been doing for 6 months since then um let me just quickly share something else okay so we've been putting in uh, some hours to actually get you our website uh, right now as we speak our website is live so you can go there and see what we've done for the past uh five months so our you can scroll through that and see what what our plan is and then there's also links to our social media platforms over here but most importantly i would actually uh, request all of you to go and visit our website and explore everything there uh, if you want to download the presentation that we just gave you can go to the who are we public pitch page and then you will be able to download it here so please do that and then we also have our manifesto online so as uh, akash presented we have uh, presented our purpose vision and mission but we also have action points drafted for each and every justice setup that we have so for social justice we have action points economic justice we have action point political justice environmental justice for every justice that we talked about we have action points on how to go there so we really like your feedback on that as well uh but most importantly uh like akash said let me also repeat what uh, let me also put it in my own words basically we have a top to bottom approach in the country right now there's union government state government and local governments but this will never work we we can only achieve justice only when we do a bottom to top approach where local governments are really strong and state and union governments are trying to facilitate and be a mediator between these local governments that's the way forward and only that's the only way we can achieve the local uh, uh, justice that we want to have in the society so like already like akash explained what we want to do is we want to uh, initiate our chapter by which we mean so right now let's take a city as an example hyderabad uh, so we will start a hyderabad chapter of justice movement of india we will uh, encourage someone to initiate the movement over there we actually uh, are launching our first chapter which is our pilot chapter today which is hyderabad city chapter so akash has actually generously agreed to start hyderabad chapter in uh, of justice movement of india in hyderabad so this will be our first pilot chapter and he has begun this chapter uh, initially in november where he started uh, doing the first step which is surveying the people in his area uh, and then like we also said the solutions have to be twofold you have to interact with politicians at the end of the day the ball stops at the court of the politicians and if the politicians are on board in fixing the whole problems in our society then we can easily change but not many politicians are up to that so we also have to encourage people who are willing to uh, run for elections among the citizens not among the political established class right now so akash is also planning to run for the telangana state elections in 2023 and he has because hyderabad is such a humongous city it's not really possible for one person to cover the whole city so he has chosen his own uh, assembly constituency which is sherlingam palli which is in the northwest uh, region and then he is going he started a project called samagra sherlingam palli i will give him an opportunity to explain more about his campaign akash please go ahead okay, thanks rahul so for this upcoming elect, um, assembly elections in telangana so i was thinking to contest from sailing appeal constituency as a part of the movement what is our justice movement of india so we initiated this samagra sailing appeal as a project in the hyderabad city chapter so through that 
right now we are at the first step i'm doing a survey over here in the sailing and pelling from the last november or december i'm meeting people over here and trying to learn about their concerns and all uh, we created a questionnaire and all and we are do, trying to find out the problems and after figuring out the problems over there we i'll interact with the experts and ngos and the local politicians who are willing to support me i will draft the solutions and we finally launch our manifesto for the elections and i'll be contesting in the 2023 assembly election as i said this is a one pathway what i am taking as i am interested in the politics but need not be everyone should contest in election they can also initiate their own project in their own local area they can do the community service itself and they can persuade the local politicians to take up the uh, solutions what we are prescribing so but i am as a person i am interested in politics i am taking this through the second route to the politics as well so that's what this is my uh, campaign website and soon right now i'm working as an uh, organization psychologist in a startup company in hyderabad but soon i am going to become as a full time kind of a person who will concentrate on this the next two or three months before elections have to be on the ground so that's what i am trying to do the yeah, samagra is a hindi or telugu word it's like holistic or integrated you can go down there's a uh, campaign points over there own analysis of shelingam peli constituency as we know shelingam peli is a top most populated constituency in the telangana it has 6 lakh people as a voters so here it runs from B- bhl to the kukkapalli region it's a very big constituency so based on my own analysis of last 15 years i came up with this six points which are very much important for the shelingam peli region so accessible health care citizen participation local economy and local jobs society centered education efficient municipal system and protecting lakes and biodiversity so based on six points right now i am doing a survey and i i come up with the top most priority of the problems what people face in the shelingam peli so samagra is like holistic or integrated change what we want so that is the meaning of samagra here if you go through the campaign uh, with this website as well you can go to the campaign page or vision for the india what we have and all that will be available over here and frequently from the february march i will be totally active in this moment spreading about this moment from all in the within the all the bots in the shelling company basically what approach we are taking is like in the local governments we have this corporators and all but i am running for the assembly elections because right now i am th- taking a constituency as a developmental unit and i am going to raise my voice in the state assembly when i win maybe fortunately if i win or not down the line so i raise my voice to devolve the powers from the state government to the local bodies so that's why i am running for the assembly elections because right now state government in the municipal act or ghmc act act at the policy which is the formulate the all all the powers are within their hands itself they are in the act itself they have written all these things even the constitution prescribed to devolve the powers so my aim is to go to the assembly and raise my voice to devolve the powers and simultaneously work with the local level people to realize the solutions what we have for the public education or the municipal system and all these things thank you akash i think that's all we had uh, i would really love if you all can comment on what we said or if you have any questions uh, akash it's really wonderful to see you working on the project samagra shelling ampalli i can see that um, you are very passionate to be in politics and bringing some change with constru- at least on constituent level you are trying to do that so it's really uh, very much uh, inspired to see you on board thank you sonika so right now we are thinking to make this as a pilot project first stage shelling and pelling so we are okay. uh, so right now i will be on the ground in the next one here we have just started in the last four or five months we are clearing about our mind what we need to do how we need to do and all so just 
this presentation we structured all the ideas what we had and put it in one place so now we are maybe we'll be following all following all the six steps uh, totally this is really uncertain so we'll see how it goes yeah i mean the more people we get and the more uh, brainstorming we do that's where we get some clarity in what is the first step we can take um, at least i can uh, psychology is one thing it's very much catchy for me <laughs> uh so that you know uh, in that area how we can actually uh it as if let's say if you are going on one level one uh, out of six ways let's say about uh, local economy and jobs so what kind of mindsets or what kind of interest they have with respect to their job so that how are they contributing their skill sets so that now they are once they are free with their uh, let's say careers or jobs uh, is it they can contribute their time to this level on this justice moment so that they can balance their lifestyles both equally let's say personal and social life so so is it possible for every citizen of india that's what i'm i'm uh, you know interested on so let's imagine if everyone is uh, having that kind of lifestyle where they are completely sorted out with their careers they are living a uh, at least with this level uh, with their good economy i mean good income and then good family relationships good uh, um health uh, at least to this level so once this uh, personal life is sorted or personal life is really they can uh, are on a good level from there uh, how they can balance their time on this social level social life also so that they participate on whichever area they feel uh, they are passionate about maybe about uh, working on lakes or working about the biodiversity or working about um, health care or working about um, political justice or animal justice so anything what they are passionate about if they can balance these two that would really uh, you know we can bring that certain changes whatever we want so yeah. um, so what, why do you, what do you think why citizens are not that socially conscious or politically conscious why they are not participating do you know what do you i know? personally feel is uh, first of all if there is no personal benefit if they don't see a personal benefit Uh, see everyone uh, on this republic day and independence day everyone put status on instagram and whatsapp okay happy republic day and once it is done it's gone and there's, and there's nothing wrong about it because we all feel inspired that okay india is a very democratic country all people have sacrificed their lives and uh, we really are doing the best in terms of gdp or economy uh, so that kind of uh, uh, motivation will be there for some time but again once they are back to their lifestyles uh it's again they go back to normal and and, and it's nothing wrong in it because uh, it's because of the social media they get involved into the media let's say uh, everyone is uh, busy with how uh, you know corruption is happening we try to make comments on it but still there's no action it's only that the entertainment or the people getting uh, some kind of comments we see and see we just leave it so any any person who really wants to get involved in some social cause they should first have the in- initial interest in it so unless there is the trigger or the fire in them to uh, see no one can change the whole world at, at a, on a right right they, this is a step by step action should be taken so even for that step by step action also for every person there is one cause they really want to work for so the trigger should be there so in order to have the trigger we should actually as you said the first step to have the survey only uh, yeah, just to talk to them uh, how are they connected to uh, city development let's say hyderabad city development how are they contributing with their careers uh, let's say if any uh, it professionals for example it professionals are they really have a lifestyle where 9 to 5 work job you know 9 to 5 lifestyles or they spend on weekends they go to pubs uh, it's fine but are there anything which is triggering in their mind so that they also can participate in this kind of moments where they can still go to pubs and enjoy their lives so it's not disturbing their person it should actually a part of their personal life uh, so th- that is the concept because if anyone is involved in this uh, usually they get fear of okay i am completely involved in this area so i am not able to enjoy my personal life not able to spend time with my family so that should not that fear should not be there it's like we are collectively working we are uh, giving assurance to each other that we are working together 
so it takes some time for everyone to get involved so that passion or the trigger should be there is at least what i uh, personally feel is this way passion and trigger from individual level and it, from the society level the sense of belongingness and collaboration correct. is also lacking correct you no know, such platform which gives the sense of belongingness okay this is our community we have to come correct. forward we have to do this exactly. so that's why we are we also thinking how to bring this sense of belongingness Mm-hmm. yeah and it's also about see uh, like you said everyone has a particular trigger right maybe someone is more imp- interested in feminism maybe somebody is more interested in animal rights and the whole point of the movement is to once there are people who care about things we want to bring them all together in the local area because you know solving the issues in your local area is more important than doing it at a global level because once you start fixing it at your level only then you can yeah. stick together as citizens once you all come together yeah. and become a big community i think then anything you ask being united you know in a republic that is what it means right like when people come together change happens hmm. so yeah that's the goal of the movement actually uh, we want to bring people together you you will see evidences of that in the past you have seen like in this india against corruption movement where people came together and then change happened but then people came together for a short period of time then they basically once the lokayukta was accepted they said they'll enact that they went back now you you can see how it's not fixed yet corruption is not fixed yet but the the movement died it's not sustainable also so this is also the point that we want to emphasize on that we don't want a moment to be a short period thing we want the people to come together and stick together for longer because there's obviously always something in the society that needs to be fixed and people have to be together to get that fixed that's the only way it works uh, i wanted to ask jala ji to introduce himself and also uh, jala ji has this movement called hariyari or rasta and he is focusing on that in his village so he is also collaborating with us jala ji please uh, if you could speak some words and tell us about your yeah. work yeah uh well i live in a village in gujarat and uh, i've been here for 10 years i'm involved with tree planting i want to get involved with garbage management and i want to make this a model village and i recommend a book to all of you called gram swaraj by mahatma gandhi because his dream was to make repu- village republics which uh, hasn't quite happened because somehow nehru's ideas were all modern industrial uh, age ideas and he and the cities grew and there's a limit to cities we have to stop the growth of cities because cities are unsustainable so if we can shift because villages are still managed we can still manage to make them sustainable but what's happening is people are migrating to cities because in a village then if the panchayat is there and the people you need a gram sabha not just gram panchayat gram sabha where people participate and uh, we need to make them aware of their rights and responsibilities uh, my my manifesto of haryali rasta can you share with everybody yeah i'll i'll do that sir thank you um Yes, yeah, Ravindra Reddy is available. Is there? Yeah. Good evening. It was nice uh, listening to you all. This is Dr. Ravindra uh, from Hyderabad. So I am a visiting uh, professor and also a psychologist, social worker. I am a multidisciplinary professional. Uh, I am also working on this uh, various fields like health, education. we do regularly uh, organize various awareness programs on health community outreach and uh, being a social worker also i am a professional social worker 
So uh, we do organize various awareness programs. But, uh, just I came across uh, uh, some time back. Uh, so I attended uh, earlier one meeting, and uh, this is my second uh, meeting with this uh, platform. It is nice, uh, you know, a lot of people are coming with uh, new, new ideas, and we really appreciate your team uh, coming forward. And uh, today, because uh, it's my place, so uh, I thought uh, by seeing that launch of Hyderabad chapter, so I, I thought something would be more promising. Uh, and uh, so it was nice uh, uh, hearing to uh, Akash uh, that uh, he has taken up this project in his uh, sailing number. Uh, maybe we should come up more uh, with such projects where uh, locally we can start pushing out and uh, so that we can give voice to various problems. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm very a uh, practical person, so not critically talking, but uh, I see, you know, the lot of time we come up with a lot of uh, solutions also. But at the end of the day, you know, we also get sometimes sidetracked or uh, off track. So how we are going to take this? Uh, like last time only I wanted to talk about I wanted to share my thing, but I thought, okay, because just attending one session, uh, that would be premature to, you know, uh, even to clarify also, because I, I don't really understand what is happening there and, uh, you know, how it is going forward. So, so what, what I am trying to understand is personally, that is a question to myself. So how we are going to take this forward? Many movements have come earlier also, now. How different is that from our this present uh, platform, and how we are going to take it forward? So that is what I I was you know critically trying to understand. So I think we have similar uh, movement, similar you know our one of earlier friends also came with the ideas and with a big bang also, but uh, you know they got disappeared over time or. Uh, they got also, you know, compromised and a lot of practical issues were there. And uh, so how we are going to take it forward? So I was pondering upon that. So maybe if you have some time, you can throw some insights. So that will help me to understand. I think, uh, so Ravindra sir, uh, as you said, there are so many movements that come up in the past. Even we are aware, aware about the movements. Uh, so many political parties have come forward to do uh, for the sustainability and also some kind of citizen-led movements as well. But as we know, every uh, till we venture into this world of uncertainty, uncertainty of all these things, no one knows how it will be materializes in the uh, on-ground context. Even right now, we are trying to figure out but one thing we can say is like we we are thinking to go with a different kind of an approach where we we have an agenda to involve the experts and NGOs and also the uh, maybe persuading the local politicians or bringing them on the same platform to go with a solution led approach. We identify the problems and we come up with the solutions as well. Right now, all of all of our activists and experts are working in the silos. So we wanted to bring them together. That's the major thing what we wanted to do. Once we bring them, from there we wanted to brainstorm about the solutions for the problems we identified. And once we figure out the solutions, some solutions may be readily available, some solutions we have to uh, brainstorm. When we come up with all the solutions, we try to persuade the local politicians over there and create awareness among the public. Or, or else so someone who contest for the elections, they'll be raising about these issues and they'll come up with the, uh, come and also popularize about the solutions over there. But how this is going to be sustainable or not, we are aiming to make it a long-term kind of a movement, uh, but uh, speaking truthfully, even we don't know whether, how far we are going to go with this, 
but anyway we have to start somewhere with this kind of an approach but based on evidence and also thinking about sustainability and also think thinking from the perspective of participatory democracy and all and also strengthening the local governments so with these all principles we should we are thinking to go forward but we'll we'll see how it goes forward even we don't have the all the answers we'll figure out down the line that's what i can say at this point of time but when we go through this pilot project of samagra shelling shelling and pelli this next one year i think we'll get lot of exposure or learning from the on the ground how we are going to visualize this on the ground from there maybe in the next year after the elections i will be in a better position to say how we are going to do that whether this possible or not but we wanted to try it initially so that's what i can say ravindra sir yeah it was nice akash uh, you know you were very frank about uh, <laughs> so that is what i actually required you know uh, we all have to start uh, at some point and there is nothing wrong you know not every time uh, you we get successful or sometimes you know lot of brainstorming is also required and at the end of the politics is such a you know field that where uh, a lot of things you know lot of dynamics lot of strategies are required it's not being honest doesn't work there in fact i have seen in my family but at the same time you know we should also encourage youth especially you know to come forward and uh, uh, come with uh, innovative ideas but uh, you know what my observation is also personal observation uh, even youth are also you know more susceptible or vulnerable to these uh, you know waves or uh, uh, trends unfortunately uh, what i observe you know being a psychologist also so at the teenage especially you know uh, when they are in college you know ug pg they have a very good uh, aspiration to change the entire world you know to an idealistic world but often that is not the reality but again we see you know when we do counseling when we see look at the issues at the college level when at the school college level lot of corruption goes on with, uh, with the students among the students you see lot of mal practice going on in colleges you see lot of uh, you know drug abuse cases and dragging uh, you know and uh, eve teasing lot of things are happening and they talk of lot of idealistic societies uh, and uh, idealistic nations so both are you know very much contradictory to each other person uh, how do how we can expect something you know great from such a person who is not able to perform in the very small world where everything is controlled and the way that person can also control the things in the classroom itself if one is not able to you know manage himself or herself the real world when you enter there is nothing you know everything is beyond our control beyond our uh, understanding there are a lot of dynamics that are happening i always whenever i also take sessions or i classes i always say you know your own classroom is a, a mini world where you have at least minimum 50 to 80 personalities different kind of personalities you are working with uh, like maybe if you are in a assembly of 60 people or 60 students like we are organizing youth parliaments in institutions in similar way we have 40 to 60 or 40 to 80 based on this class we have 40 politicians say how we are going to manage and uh, we see lot of things are happening and uh, you know at, at the other side we are more ideal so how how we are going to manage at a personal level because you are also a psych so how do you look at these because these are the things we need to address at a personal level because you know most of the times uh, uh, i am also a journalist uh, see when uh, often i also face this question you know this uh, your media shows this way that way but uh, you know at the end of the day all uh, these professionals come from college school only na no? from the society only so as long as the society is like that 
no matter the bureaucrats no matter the doctors no matter the lawyers or judges whoever it may be all are coming from the society unless and, and until the individual gets transformed when we are talking about the moral aspects you know value ethical aspects of an individual unless and until that is not uh, you know changed how do how we can expect a good uh, you know or a uh, productive or a prospective uh, future generation so that is always contradicting and even i i pose such a question and i am also being posed such a question so how do we look at because you are also into the psychology field might be you are also come across because we all have come through those college days and might we all have done so many things in college days and today we are also working and how do you see all these and how you are going to take it forward earlier it was different but now with uh, social media and lot of influences uh, and uh, you know information is available at everyone's disposal for the good purpose and the bad purpose and how we are going to take it forward because we alone cannot take it forward we need a huge lot of uh, team you know we need a big team in coming days how we are going to address this okay so there uh, one important crucial aspect what you have raised is like ravindra sir how we are going to guide the younger generations why they are not behaving according to the the setup which they are part of one important thing is like as a society when you are evolving in any country maybe us or usa or india or any country one thing even our brains analyze totally is like you have to have a good role models in a society so most of the children or when they are growing up they are very much influenced by the role models in the country as you see the us society you can figure out the role models in the sciences the stem what we call science technology and mathematics you have role models in each field so that's how the people who are the there will be very minimal people who are entering into the undergrad or post grad position in us but whenever they enter they will be very bright so they were totally inspired by these role models in us maybe in stem field or in politics or lawyer any other field but unlike in india we have a very influential like social media influencers and all but sadly we like lack the role models in the country the good role models so as a society if you see we don't have the role models even though if we have the potential people who contributed to the indian society the media don't project them like that so the media only creates a story about them or something some documentary about them when they no they, they are not part of this world anymore they bring up a story when they are not part of this world when they are leaving right now no media channel will create awareness about this is the person who contributed to society this is how and this, this is the one part of the issue another part part is education system in india the education system is plays a very important role to shape the young minds so as i said they have to critically analyze about the society they critically analyze about the the surrounding situations what they are going through if the education system is just like uh, motivating them to climb the ladder you have to get the 10th you have to get the iit je you have to get crack the iim or you have to go to us you have to go to there then people will only think about the money they get the, the job they want if the education system is totally motivating the people to go in this road then the, as you know in the social psychology the context you create that's how the behavior comes out the children behave according to the context where they are part of the context here is the education system or the policy which we have in india and the context is also larger culture of the india the role models we don't have we don't have the critical analysis right now the indian government right now the party who is in the ruling ruling they totally deny deny the scientific facts they totally deny the empathy among the people so this kind of context if we have the complex of culture and also the system what we have these two combined then the people who are coming out of the system will be the same 
they wanted to just they are just like a products which are coming out of the factory they just wanted to climb the ladder they wanted to have a higher money in their life they wanted to have better lifestyle okay having a better lifestyle is not a wrong thing but as you said they don't have the social conscious political conscious that will only develop when you have a critical analysis which starts from the classroom itself either it should start from the mentors who are the teachers they themselves should uh, talk to the children from the younger age how to critical analyze analyze the situations but unfortunately the teachers are also the victims of the same system so this whole, whole thing is a loop but if you wanted to break this then you you have to get out of the system you have to look it critically then only you understand how this is working thinking thinking out of the system then you analyze okay this is how it is working it's totally in a loop right now so that's how the children are behaving according to the context and at individual level also they have some kind of things i am not saying it's totally uh, the responsibility of the system or totally responsibility of a country but at the individual level also they have their own ambitions but if you want to shape them in a correct way these all things should fall uh, in a in close connection the system the context and the individual aspirations as well who was thinking what even i thought how to because my research is basically in the engineering education i did my undergrad research in engineering education my background is engineering i thought about engineering education why it is degrading how to increase the quality of engineering and all that's how i started researching about engineering education field i got to know about psychology is very important thing if you wanted to develop a curriculum or pedagogy for students that's how i went up ventured into the masters in cognitive science so as i see this all are the systemic aspects if you wanted to bring a change or shape the children's minds we have to think a think in a larger perspective to bring out the role models we what we have and also start changing the education system what we have so uh, i mean what kind of strategy we are going uh, ahead with uh, to bring this change especially we need to work on youth right at this point of time because they are the you know ones who are going to be our helping hands or our partners in this uh, project so how we are going to address and how we are going to approach what kind of strategy or approach we, uh, we have to reach them so here as you said the politics is a very uncertain and there so many other obstacles will be there and the strategy is like we are also figuring out the strategy now people are very much bombarded with so many propaganda and so many other waves as you said and in that kind of a society if you wanted to bring as a society is like polarized society now we are very much living in a polarized society in polarized society if you wanted to bring some kind of a change is very difficult but we are thinking to start from a point of view where we can spread uh empathy and love and also about the critical thinking and also about the developmental issues what we have in the local government we are thinking to bring them together with a common cause and that's what we are also thinking about the strategies yeah rahul you are saying something no 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 please go i think you put it very well i want to share one point uh, with ravindra sir and akash like you we were discussing about how we can bring the social consciousness in the youth so um, i am a soft skills trainer so i have trained uh, students about uh, students on uh, their career like how to be in the corporate so for the past one year i have trained almost 300 plus students so it's uh, they are the students they are from financially poor backgrounds where they they don't know how to speak in a proper basic english so it's like uh, the more interacted with them what i understood at least let's say in a very basic view a uh, basic level of okay how how their families are uh, are they having any siblings um, how they manage their day at least how they start their food so everything so on this basic levels when we had discussions and we started uh, getting a deeper level what i understood is it's about the the emotion they need that emotion of that uh, i am not being judged here if if i want to do something if i if let's say if i do any mistake i should not be judged 
I should give an assurance that, okay, you, you can still get up once again and try once more. So that is really missing is what I felt because uh, as Ravinder sir said, is where youth are, uh, who are who are going, uh, who are doing UG or PG courses, they are really very passionate to being idealistic world. But again, they are the, again, the same group of, same set of people where they're getting trapped into all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, Eve teasing, whatever uh, sir has said. So it's like, uh, even though, like, we all make mistakes. We all have made mistakes in our past lives. Even we, at this moment also, we can make a mistake. So it's like, for especially for the youth, it's like we should give an assurance that even if you are making a mistake, we are still there for you to support because we are humans, we are emotional beings. We are supposed to make mistakes. I mean, that's how we are designed. Uh, no one is perfect in this world. So we can make mistakes. So even if we make mistakes or even if we are in a, it's like we have to create a platform or a system where everyone is having their own talents, bringing their talents on the platform and uh, give their best, whatever they are good at, whatever they are best at. And once we get all the right people uh, on the platform, that's where we still give assurance that, okay, now we got, uh, let's say, 20 set of people who are having different set of talents. So different set of people now, uh, it's not again perfect yet. We are still start, slowly starting building community there. So it's like a slow, uh, a slow change is always uh, a very uh, good way to start. So it's always at the end, the emotion we carry, uh, the... Uh, Assurance we give to each other that it's okay if we still make mistakes. Uh, I mean, that's what I, I understood so far with whatever the trainings I have done for my students. And uh, they really have very great ideas to build within their families also. It's like uh, they want to do some kind of uh, change management in their, let's say, maybe in a simple colony they're living in. So they have very, very much great ideas, but only the lack of support is missing, lack of assurance is missing. Uh, I mean, lack of assurance is there. So if that is there, so now now comes the uh, finding the right people. So as a soft skills trainer, uh, I know that we actually as a trainer, what I do is we train people about how should they communicate with their clients for corporates, for example, how should they communicate with their clients and how should uh, they solve the problem? How should they build effective teams? Um, how should they negotiate with their clients? So if, if all these kind of soft skills are considered, we definitely... Uh, at some point of time, we know that certain set of people or maybe a specific person is right fit for some kind of problem. Let's say if person is good at problem solving. So that that person might have a good set of strategies to uh, brainstorm of, or getting some ideas. So, it's like, so uh, if the question is to find the right set of people first, it's only to uh, see what are their people skills, how good are they at people skills. Um, how are they not being, uh, I mean, how are they not being biased? How are they being so stubborn on something? So, uh, I mean, that is one of the ways to find right people for any pro for any project, for example. Let's say we hire people for companies, right? So how do we hire? So based on certain criteria, we hire people. So even for this moment, we should have certain set of criteria maybe so that uh, we don't uh, we don't feel that this moment is not stopping. It's not a short term to have a long-term movement, should have a right set of people. So to find a right set of people, we should have certain criteria so that no one is jumping in and out and no one is not, uh, again, uh, let's say if, if, if any person is being a part of this justice movement, they should actually follow the four pillars. At least they should have the intention to follow those four pillars, right? Because we, for, we uh, let's say we have five people are here. We are not sure we are still following the five, four pillars correctly. There's no perfect way. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, we should have the intention to put our best to, uh, you know, work on those four pillars. So if that kind of uh, assurance or the kind of support, the kind of criteria we give, maybe that will be one of the ways to, you know, pick the right people uh, is what I uh, wanted to share. And also one thing, as Agar said, like we have to have role models to give. That is very, very great point. But also one thing, um, like we all have, we all humans have been conditioned that uh, we should look outside to bring the change. But first we should look inside to bring the change. 
So even that is very much important. So uh, if let's say, okay, now I'm very passionate to do this. Now I have great idea. I have these tools and resources. Uh, I have these skill sets. Now I have to start. So the moment the person thinks about bring a change or the moment the person thinks about, okay, if the resource is not missing, the person should not be demotivated. The person should get the inner motivation that even if the resources is not available at the moment, I can still make this possible because I have believed in, in myself. So that kind of uh, inner motivation should be there. It's like always first start from inside, always make the changes in you and then start bringing the same change in outside. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's how it is actually seen. So even if we all five are here, that means we at certain point of time, we had that courage and we had that introspection we have done for ourselves to think about what are we, what are we good at, what are we passionate about, why are we working for this cause. So that kind of questioning, the introspection should be there. So the more we uh, start giving a platform for people to uh, looking at themselves inside and once they are ready, they can come out with their, you know, skill sets or the talents is what I uh, personally feel. Thank you. So I, I also wanted to quickly address the, so the Ravindra sir, he asked, like, you know, many moments have come and what if this dies out? Like, you know, but that's the, in my experience, this is, that is very true, actually. Like, like people have, are passionate about something they want to do. And in the beginning, they have this fire to actually change the whole system. But once they start doing it over time, it fades away. I think the problem there is, there is no community to support. So if, if there's a strong local community, which is actually encouraging them to do this work, once you see, you know, emotions are contagious. If you see other person very motivated beside you, that rubs off on you as well. You will be motivated as well. And then, so I think once you gather enough people with right amount of passion in the community, I think there will be some sort of social consciousness in the community itself. And then when it comes to uh, involving youth in the whole pipeline, I think uh, Akash put it well that said, you know, they need role models. I think now Akash is actually becoming some sort of role model in his own community. He's, 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 he's willing to actually, um, Akash has actually told me that he's resigning his job now in February or something. And then from March, He's actually going to be on the ground for one year, trying to bring people together in his constituency, discussing issues with people, try to strategize solutions, and then, you know, contest in election. So he's actually walking the talk, and that is very difficult. So I think that is also very inspirational. I, I hope more people, he's also a very young person, so it's... It's, I think other youngsters will get motivated by seeing youngsters like Akash here. And like, like Sonika said, obviously, like, you know, now there should be space for making mistakes in the community. You'll obviously end up making a lot of mistakes, but I think it's about like, you know, giving space to make mistakes and then you learn from your mistakes. That's how we proceed in life anyway. So, so, and like we said, I think, Hyderabad chapter and the project Share Lingam Pali, these are our pilot projects. So we don't know yet how it's going to scale out on ground. This will be our first uh, pilot thing. So we, we, I'm sure we will learn a lot from what we are going to do in Hyderabad. And then we can basically build on that, see how to, we, we are flexible to change our strategies whenever necessary to fit the situation on the ground because ultimately that's what matters. Like you take it to the people directly. Sonika said rightly, the self uh, introspection is the key for an individual, but all the individuals may not have uh, that kind of inner power to introspect, uh, introspect inwards. But we as a movement, as Sonika said, and Rahul also said, we need to create a platform or an environment where people can commit mistakes, 
and they can also self introspect themselves what they need to do in their lives so we need to create that kind of a critical environment where they can have this kind of dialogues within themselves so that from there they'll interact with other people they know about the different things and they can make up they, that will shape their minds so uh, what i got to know is that we need to create that kind of a context which is lacking right now in the outside world so uh, anything else you want to comment on ravindra sir yeah everyone really you know contributed to this discussion uh, have we identified any such role models especially because you have a, a political uh, view ahead so you you are contesting in elections so have you identified any uh, you know ideals uh, in the ideal role models in politics because that is where you know it is very difficult to find and uh, if we have to show some role models in politics so have you identified any such personalities or how you are going to go ahead and how we are going to bring youngsters into that showing yeah this is the kind of ideal person or a personality in politics i think that should be the most challenging <laughs> task for us thing for me the role models is like uh, i'm much more motivated or inspired by a uh, few people in indian politics like jignesh mevani from gujarat right now he was an independent candidate uh, when he first fought for the election from gujarat uh, in a constituency in gujarat right now he is a president of congress party in gujarat and he and also there is another uh, politician from bihar she recently launched a poll a party called plurals in bihar pushpam priya choudhary she is a very young politician in bihar she did her masters from london school of economics and she did her double masters and she recently came to bihar before 2020 elections and she launched a party and i was that at that time i was not at all decided to enter into politics and all i was observing what is happening around the india before the elections she, she launched the party like one year before and she roamed all over the bihar and she right now she didn't win any seat unfortunately but she created a whole cadre for her own organization now right now she has cadre in every district and every constituency over there If you guys can also look into this party called plurals and i think she is a really inspiring person i was following her from the last two Two years, two or three years, and she is the one person in the politics, as per I can know, I can quote. And Jignesh Mevani and these people, and uh, from political domain right now, I can can't say in any in India, but from foreign, you can see from US. I was also following AOC, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. She is a congresswoman from New York, and other few people in UK as well. but philosophical domain i have so many other persons as well from where i got inspiration from ambedkar to emen roy from karl marx and there are a lot of people over there in hyderabad the people who motivated is lubna sarwat ji is a one lady she is really working for the environmental causes and also she conducts in election she is also inspiration for me lubna sarwat ji nice i think as the time moves on uh, keep uh, you know these things will keep unfolding themselves so it's a, it's a nice uh, discussion uh, i think uh, really everyone has uh, really uh, shared their insights and maybe you know in coming sessions we can also pick up uh, whenever there is such meeting maybe i don't know how far it is feasible but uh, maybe we can take one role model and uh, you know we can discuss the merits and demerits you know, so that uh, we can have some examples you know or role models uh, maybe when we go to the field also and uh, we can uh, reach to more people uh, maybe this is my second meeting i don't know how many meetings happened earlier but uh, maybe in coming days uh, whenever the meeting is scheduled if we can reach more uh, you know uh more friends then uh, i think uh, it will be slowly growing up 
it was nice uh, and i wish you everyone all the success happy republic day and uh, today is auspicious occasion of vasant panchami and uh, you know especially the goddess of wisdom and knowledge and intellect so uh, maybe we seek the blessings of almighty and yeah thank you it was nice to be part thank of you. this discussion thank you thank you thank you, you Thank you. Thank you yeah, I think much better than I expected. Definitely, we ended up having really nice conversation. So, uh, all I would request is, uh, like you know, I would request you all to come again. Uh, so we, what we try to do is, we try to do a citizens dialogue every month, uh, once a month, and try to do that, and then try to also. I I would recommend please join the movement. We have a form, uh, so please join the movement. I'm going to send the movement uh, form here. Please join that, and then like like we said, doesn't have to be that everyone's just doing one thing. I think we are basically looking for people to contribute in whatever the way they can. It doesn't have to be now. Akash is planning to run in politics. That doesn't mean everyone has to do that. you know people can do community service people can just try to you know initiate a movement in their area where they are living and then try to bring people in their area just just we can start by doing a, a citizen survey and then try to see what kind of problems are there in your community so like yeah. small things it doesn't have to be a huge thing yeah thank you 